Hey y'all, this is Hamza, and I'm super happy we get to hang out for a little bit. Alright guys, welcome to Hanging Out with Hamza. Today we have a special guest on. Uh, he is someone that I've really respected for a long time. Um, I've only known him for about two to three years now, but I've learned a lot from him from the few moments that I've been able to hang out with him. I picked up a lot from him and I've seen the passion in him that not a lot of people have. And um, yeah, he was an instant guest that I wanted on this podcast. So just to give you a brief intro, uh, his name is Tan. He is actually married to somebody who used to be at my hygienist the first time I worked in uh, my first year of dentistry. And I became really close friends with her. And then just by stroke of luck, I met him through my brother who worked at or got worked on at the same gym by him. So it all just kind of came to a nice little, uh, I guess, fate just kind of got us together. And I've been thankful ever since. But uh, without further ado, this is Tan. I'll let him kind of introduce himself. Thank you so much for the kind, warm introduction. I'm um, very grateful for this family, uh, myself. I'm very grateful for the people I've met along the way in this journey and continue to meet. And I'm very honored to be on your podcast and thank you for selecting me. And it's just one of those things when you find genuine, kind hearted individuals, you just gravitate to them. And you are definitely one of those person where uh, you're a great human being and just thank you. My pleasure, man. Thanks for coming on. So uh, I want to just kind of start off by talking about your profession that you were originally in uh, physical therapy. So Mm -hmm. I had never seen a physical therapist before. I had a lot of physical therapy friends and um, I was always in tune with, you know, the science of it. And I knew that it was something that was very important, especially as an athlete, somebody that's played soccer. I've always had a huge respect for what you guys do. Um, And yeah, the first time I saw you, I kind of talked about what I was going through and uh, I kind of knew that I had some issues, but I didn't know what exactly was going on. You just explained it so clearly and not only that but you explained it in such a way that I could tell that you were passionate about this you you knew exactly what was going on and it was something that you had a lot of love for and you loved right. to um like fix these flaws Elements, in humans. Yeah. yeah exactly mm-hmm. and the way you explained it to me was you would use metaphors and you would use analogies that right. were easy to understand and it was funny because right. I I learned that in dentistry too, that a lot of the ways you talk to patients is you have to simplify simplify for them and make it easy to understand and digest. And I appreciated that because you spoke to me like a human being. You didn't talk down to me based on obviously the things I was doing wrong. Um, You kind of express it in a way to show me how my body is a machine and it's something that I need to respect and appreciate and uh, treat it in certain ways. And so I just want to know how you kind of got into physical therapy, what brought you there and what made you kind of fall in love with the field? Great bullet points that you all brought up. Um, those are, and I can't wait to take a deep dive into all those bullet points because I have reasons and purpose and intent behind all of them. Uh, funny, I was a personal trainer first. That was my first love. Um, I, I got my first uh, gig at Lifetime and I'll always be grateful to Lifetime. They've really helped me in growing uh, my skill sets. And the issue was transformation was never the problem, right? Whether it was weight loss, whether it was putting on muscle, whether it was performance in wh- whichever category. The issue I had was pain, limitation, ailments, restrictions, right? A client will come in, I, I woke up with a kink in my neck, or I've been dealing with low back pain or knee pain. And I'm like, okay, I can foam roll you. I could, you know, take you through some stuff. You feel relief, but you're not resolving the problem, right? And that was the issue. I was encountering too many of these. It was like, I got relief from it, but I still have it. And then, so my next thought is physical therapy. I got to get to the scientific aspect of this, right? The medical aspect of this. Cool. Go to school, fast forward, yada, yada, yada. And unfortunately, when I came out, It wasn't what I thought it was. Uh, There was a year I had 10 W-2s from 10 different companies, right? And hospitals and clinics. And I felt like I was doing the same mundane routine to everyone. Like you, for example, formerly played soccer. 
I would have a 65 year old person on the table right next to you, same issue, same ailment, let's say hip pain, hypothetically. And I'm doing the same exact protocol to this, to you, which is a high level athlete and to this uh, person that is probably sedentary, right? I never thought anything of it. And you got so many modalities were thrown at us. And a lot of it was pushing insurance. It was always billing. That was always press versus getting this person pain free. And I didn't realize that. I mean, I just listened to my superior. I did my job. I was just like, this isn't right. Right. We're not we're just putting Band-Aids on things right now. And I've, I thought I was, I felt like I was treating the insurance more than I was the patient. And that really bothered me at the end of the day because it's not really what I signed up for, right? Because I genuinely care about people. And when you bring up that word passion, right? It was one of those things where if you work towards what you love, it's called passion. If you're just working towards something you don't care about, that's just called stress, right? And that was the biggest thing was like, I'm working but I'm not fulfilled, right? And so with that being said, so a few years go by, I'm working at these big time clinics, anticipating, hoping that I would find these mentors. I'm like, I'm doing the same thing. Here's your kid, uh, list of patients, go treat them. Okay. And I'm like, I want to learn, right? And so my business partner and I, uh, Kanal Shaw, we we're like, well, he, he helped, got me through school. And it was one of those things where we're like, dude, there's got to be a different way. This isn't right. I, I can't do this for the rest of my life, right? And I was still training on the side because that was my love. That was my escape, in a way, from that nine to five, right? So I would train first thing in the morning, hit the hospital I was at, then train in the evening. And uh, I want to thank my wife a lovely wife for being so patient with me and just sticking by me through this journey. And so Kanal and I were like, we're, and um, we're gonna travel across the United States, find these mentors, right? And so we did, we went to workshops, classes, stayed up till late, <laughs> flipping through textbooks, really understand the human body from a holistic approach, right? Because so I didn't feel like these modalities were doing anything to them. And there's a ton of uh, written articles about placebo effects and all this stuff, and just nothing was concrete enough, right? And so we took what we learned from these different individuals, and we've kind of pieced our own protocol, uh, our own just approach to healing the human body. And so with that, we started discovering, don't treat the symptom, treat the entire system, all right? If this person is dealing with knee pain, and I wanna give uh, Greg Cook a lot of credit for this, it's called the joint by joint concept. Um, and he created his own uh, program. And if you are dealing with knee pain, hypothetically, the issue is typically above the joint or below the joint. In school, you're taught, treat the knee, just the knee, right? Put the TENS unit on the knee, put the hot pack, cold pack, put the ultrasound on the knee. Nothing's gonna resolve. And then we started understanding, oh my goodness, if there's limitations, if there's immobility at your ankle, immobility at your hip, it's gonna affect how your knee stabilizes. Hmm, you're blown away now. Interesting. So we address dorsiflexion, we address hip range of motion. Holy smoke, the individual's knees gotten better without surgery, without doing anything invasive, right? Without injections and medication. Because I don't want to get into a soapbox about that, but which I can, <laughs> if you're okay with that. Yeah. Uh, with uh, there's big pharma. Wow. And so. With that being said, it's just one of those things where we are not designed to ingest so many of these man-made pills, right? Don't get me wrong. Modern medicine's phenomenal. Yeah. Okay. There's a ton of benefits behind it. I'm not knocking it. It is beneficial. Yeah. 
But there's a time and place. Correct. Yeah. Right? You can't just feed people pills and expect things to get better. Right. Without educating them on, hey, this is what you need to do to prevent this from reoccurring. Versus, oh, you have a side effect from this pill. Here's this other pill to offset it. Oh, that pill is messing you up. Here's this other pill. Sorry. And then let's go imaging. Imaging shows a certain thing, which I'll get into MRIs and x-rays later. Boom. A lot of people end up having surgery. And next thing you know, they have written themselves off. And that is where this, I really took this by storm. Was I would hear so many people say, I'm too old. I can't do this anymore. I used to be able to do this. I was once was. I was like, dude, you're 30 something years old. It's the second quarter of your life. Yeah. We still got the third, fourth quarter to play. Yeah. What are we doing here? Right. And so that was that that took me on this real journey on how do you mix uh, ancestral wisdom with modern medicine together to enhance the human body. Yeah. Right. Again, like you said, there's a time and place for everything, right? If I got into a car accident, doc, I need you. Piece me back together. Yeah. Right? But when it comes to acute chronic ailments, you can resolve it yourself. You just have to be guided and educated in the right way. Yeah. Right? I I think I see a lot of that. I mean, dentistry and physical therapy, like your your journey you went through is exactly what I'm going through now because I just recently left an office and I was in the corporate world with your wife and- I experienced that where everything was just one solution. It was like, there was no reasoning. There was no deducing like what could be like the underlying factor that could lead to this. It was just like, no, we were taught this and that's what it is and pay us the money. Right. Right. And I hated it. And Masi can uh, vouch for me. I was miserable at that because I knew that half of those times I was giving this patient the answers. I knew that it wasn't the right answer, but right. it was what I was told to told do. To do. Correct. And yeah, so I left and now thankfully I'm in an office where we're doing holistic. And when I say holistic, I mean doubly holistic. Like I'm looking at the big picture, Proactive. not just yes. like one uh, single identifying factor. And the doctor that I'm with, the mentor, he approaches it exactly the way you do. He went to do a three month meditation retreat and he's really into the spiritual and the Eastern aspect of medicine. And I think it's great because while he does respect that, that's not entirely his methods. He still believes in medicine when necessary mm. and all that stuff. And Correct. I think it's so important, especially in America, in our, mm-hmm. our healthcare system, that we need to appreciate that and not let these insurance companies take advantage of Agreed. our patients. And I think, unfortunately, with the way things have been going, they have been taking full advantage of it. And it's people like you that are taking a step back and taking things back into their hands. And it does take a lot. It takes a lot of risk, but that's why, like I said, I respect you and I wanted you on this podcast to talk about that. So just to get an idea, how long did that entire process take? Like how many years was it that you went on this kind of uh, (laughs) journey with Canal to understand this stuff? Great question. It's still going on today. (laughs) And, uh, you're constantly a student of the game, yeah. right? You're constantly trying to discover new solutions, more efficient solutions to resolving a certain element. Um, we started Revolve Physical Therapy in 2017. We graduated in 13. I think within two years of my license, I kind of got fed up. I want to say in 2015, that's when it really, really made me take a deep dive into fixing the human body with from a different approach, right? Too often we're very reactive with our issues. And I, will, I always tell people, be, be an advocate for your own health, right? Seek advice, seek consult with these quote unquote medical specialists, but don't buy into every single thing they tell you, yeah. right? And that's the thing and just, and I appreciate when I come across, it's really a, truly a breath of fresh air when you come across uh, medical health professionals that are proactive in their field, because so often that's not the case because ego typically gets in the way, right? And we, we pride ourselves in these initials that we put behind our name, but we're not, pro- or we're not being proactive in the work in your industry. Yeah. Right. And just like you said, you you are told what to do in school. You apply it. If it doesn't work, you should be if you are truly passionate about the industry you signed up for and you're not looking for that paycheck, you should be seeking knowledge elsewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
And that's a true thing because I find, and this is where my problem is with medical professionals is that we look too much. So let's say just hype I don't want to go off on a tangent. If you're in, uh, you're an engineer, if you're in real estate, if you're in construction, hypothetically, yes. Two plus two does equal four, right? If you're in the medical field, the human body is different everywhere yeah. and with every human. Yeah. It cannot be the one simple solution that you are told and given, right? Just because it worked for one person doesn't mean it's going to work for the other. Yeah. And that's where you as a medical health professional, you should not be judged on your GPA to get accepted into a school, right? You should be judged on your character and your morals and how passionate you are at helping people. Yeah. Right? On top of your GPA. Because you have some guy that's, and, and I say this because I, we have a lot of students that come into our clinic and do the rotation. Smart as can be. Obviously, when they're speaking, you already know they're intellectually there. You put them in the field. They are a robot. They yeah. don't know what to do. <clears throat> right? And they don't care. They just care about what they went to school for. Yeah. Give me that X salary. Yeah. And that's it. And that's why when I'm, when I hire, it's very specific to character and not what's on your resume. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think emotional intelligence is something that we lack significantly in healthcare. Oh my goodness. It's something that matters people. Yeah. It's (laughs) something that I've been harping on a lot with, you know, just even my social media presence and everything has been a lot about mental health and mental health and our healthcare system, because not only do we lack the empathy sometimes, or sometimes the most, the smartest doctors have the least empathy. And it's just the nature of like, you know, the competitiveness of our field yes. and everything like that. And you tend to start putting patients as numbers instead of oh, actual goodness. people. You start to think like, I did this many surgeries in the last month. That's wild, right? And you forget that those surgeries were actually people that you worked on. And like, you're, you're now trying to gain these numbers. And like you said, it's, it's all about the paycheck now. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, that's what makes you renowned. Yeah. It's the amount of patients you've seen Yeah, and not actually the results of these patients. Yeah. I mean, cause even in these corporate driven practices, the one that I left with, I was with Masia, I was not happy because it was a numbers driven practice. Every patient was a number, every procedure was a number and you wanted to max out on all of those. It doesn't matter if they come back. It doesn't matter if you don't see them as long as you did as much as you could in the daytime. Right. And I hated that because I could have done, sure. I could have made 5k on this one single person, but in two months time, if three of those things start failing that I did, that's my reputation. Yeah. That's my name. That's the entire profession yeah. too. Like the patient never wants to see a dentist again. Mm-hmm. Right. So it, it affects us as a whole. Um, and yeah, that's why I left. That's why I was not happy. And, uh, yeah. So when I talk to you about it, I see that you're one of the few people that I hope, you know, you can inspire others to see this kind of stuff. And you're right. I do wish schools looked at that, but unfortunately it doesn't, we're not right? in a world that you know, uh, respects or, uh, favors the people who care about stuff like that. So we'll be going against the grain every single day of our lives. Yeah. Right. And it's very normal. And it's a challenge that I've taken on. It's always an uphill battle. And when I work with these orthopedic surgeons, right, there's a fine line in how you talk to them. And so there's a ton of great ones, but there's a ton of horrible ones yeah, too. Orthopedic surgeons don't exactly oh, have man. the strongest reputation with that. And it's just one of those things where I would, they would come in to see me for their neck pain or low back pain. Yeah. They're like, how'd you fix this? Right. My, my MRI revealed this. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, I need you to put everything you learned in medical school to yeah. the side. Okay. And I'm talking with all due respect. Yeah. Right. And I would break it down to them on why they are dealing with low back pain. And it doesn't matter how much of a separation or a herniated disc that they have. Yeah. Just, just listen and apply and your issues will be resolved. And some of them, obviously, they're like, wow. And so they start referring us patients. Yeah. Right? And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that is genuinely my goal is to get every single human being pain free so they could go pursue whatever it is that they love doing. Right. Whether it's crossfitting, walking, playing on the beach, playing with your kids, uh, pro athlete, doesn't matter. Right. We are all humans. We all have desires, interests, 
And so whatever it is that we could get you doing and moving towards, because movement is medicine. Yeah. That's the fundamentals of it. If you move, your body will naturally heal itself. You're designed to, it's a healing machine, right? You're like Wolverine in there, but we don't ever talk about that. Yeah. It's take this, cut that. It was like, no. So I'll fix these guys. And obviously the ones that do become believers, they send the ones that think I'm full of fluff. They don't, they walk, which is a risk I'm willing to take right. because if it means that I could help a person and resolve a person's ailment, that's all I care about. Money doesn't drive me. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing. That is my genuine goal in life. When I started this with Kanoa was just how many people can we reach? Right. And I love seeing, like I said, I said this earlier, if you are in the healthcare, please, please, please be, it doesn't matter what field you're in, a nurse, a dentist, doctor, just be proactive with your patient and genuinely treat that patient in regards to their lifestyle and, and what they want to achieve versus maximizing the bill. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think you mentioned earlier, like, you know, it's not about the money and stuff, but another thing I did learn is, I mean, at the end of the day, we do have to earn an income. We do have to pay for, you know, we have to pay the mm -hmm. bills and that will all come naturally when you are good to your patient, when you do treat them the right. way they're meant to be treated, that will actually, you'll get paying paid, tenfold the yeah. amount because you'll get referrals. Yep. You'll get that patient as a lifelong patient. Um, that patient will literally move wherever you yes. move. Like that's Correct. the loyalty you'll get from that. And that's 100%. what I've learned uh, with my mentor. You know, like he has patients that have literally like sent families over to him. And so if money's ever something you guys are considering and thinking like, oh, I don't want to do that because it's going to be less like it might not be. A, it's a long game thing. It's it like, is. It's, a it's an a investment you're going to make and it'll pay off uh, in the future. And Absolutely. So, um, yeah. And then the other thing you brought up earlier, I tried not to interrupt you during your not things, all. but um, I think another thing that we deal with is with our titles is we get comfortable with them. And, you know, we talked about how once you get that title at the end, you think, all right, I'm in the field. I'm mm -hmm. done. I'm happy where I am. Correct. I just got to do the treatments now, but it's a lifelong process. It's a practice. And that's why they call this a practice because you're constantly just yes. learning and doing it. And so the fact that you and Kanal went through this entire journey to figure out how to step out of the box, I think that's something I hope that all the listeners get some inspiration from because I had the, um, you know, I had that misfortune for a while where I graduated, moved to Houston. I was like, all right, I'm a dentist now, time to make the money, just be happy. And then it struck me pretty fast, pretty early that that's not what I wanted to do. I wasn't happy. And I'm happy that I went through that shitty experience of course, because you have to. It, it's like a, it gives it's you a this reality check. Yeah, yeah. Like if, if I was, if I stayed there, I could have been comfortable. I could have been making easy money, uh, and just been at that cush job. Yes. And a lot of people do that. And I think it's, it's good for if you're happy in that way, but it's not the, it's not the way you should go if you genuinely care about your profession as yes. a healthcare provider. And if you care about your patients, I think you're going to be uncomfortable for a while. And that's what you were for like the last, you know, six, seven years. And like you said, you're still going through it, but you at least have that satisfaction of knowing that you're following your own journey and you're not taking this comfortable path that most people take where you just kind of sit back and just, stay there the rest of your life oh, man it's so true yeah. and it's i think it comes at the end of the day we are all put here whoever you believe in i respect just be a good human being but we're all put on this planet to serve right i, I genuinely believe that whatever your craft is you are here to serve another individual right and it's it, it so to cut you off so edgar one of my business partners now, we're, we're opening a gym. It's called Maximum Movement Clinic. And that's with that same intent, right? He was with us during that journey. It was the three of us that traveled. And it's we start discovering, like, you have... So I don't want to go off on another tangent because I love this stuff. Uh, I, I go keep all going. day. Yeah, I'll and going back, like, your, your happiness, right? But we talk about the word happiness and joy a lot. And... The misconception in today and years back then, too, is that you're raised to go to school, get the education. Your parents made a ton of sacrifices to provide the income and facilitate you going to school, get your education, get your degree, and then go out, make money, 
That's it. No one ever talks about what do you love doing? What are your actual interests? Yeah. Us being in an Asian household, I don't want to be stereotypical, but it's very true, right? Yeah. It, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be an engineer, be something with the title. Yeah. Right. And that a lot of times that that person becomes unhappy down the road because you think it's the right thing to do, right? Is to get this degree and go be this X, whatever it is, and do it for the rest of your life. Yeah. I love the fact that you branched out of your industry. Granted, you're still practicing, but you're pursuing something you love, such as this podcast, right? It's scary. Yeah. It's damn scary. I mean, and you're 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 gonna push, you're gonna try, you're gonna do whatever it takes, and there's gonna be a lot of crappy episodes. There's gonna be maybe a few great episodes. The one with my brother. <laughs> but once you hit, you are gonna hit. And, uh, and I wish people would understand that if you wanna be great at anything, you have to struggle a lot at yeah. it, right? It's yeah. too many people give up. Yeah. And it's just, don't settle. Figure out what you j- truly love doing. Yeah. It was, for me, it wasn't a trainer or being a therapist or whatever. It was finding out that I genuinely wanted to transform the human body in a positive way. Yeah. And that is what I'm pursuing. Yeah. Right. All right. So, um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to kind of shift into was obviously you've kind of transitioned into an entirely new field. I did. And (laughs) so even though we spoke about, you know, your passion for physical therapy and how you got into it, now you're branching out and doing something which is... Like you said, you got to branch out into other things, push yourself, be uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, and that's the only way you can grow. So tell me more about this field you got into, what brought you into it, what inspired you to get into it. Um, okay. So where do I begin? Uh, first, I want to thank my wife again. Okay. Because I've been nonstop. Okay. And it's just one of those things where I never want to settle I don't want to be complacent and I never want to be the norm. And it's one of those things that I do it in a very subtle way. I, I'm huge on treating people with respect, being kind to others and assisting in every single way, have a positive impact on every human being you meet. And so obviously uh, Revolve Physical Therapy is doing well. Uh, Edgar and I are, are opening up a functional fitness facility. It's called Maxwell Movement Clinic. and It's that one right there is big for me because it's about giving that individual a second life back at their chance, right? People come in with self-doubt, fear, insecurity, anxiety when they step into a gym because you see all these machines, you see these aesthetically good looking people, you see, and you're always comparing, you're always comparing. And once you do that, you will never, ever give yourself a chance, right? Because you are never thinking about leveling yourself up. You're always thinking about what they're thinking of you. And that's why so many people, when they go into a gym, they don't achieve their goals. And they just go to the gym because they feel like they're obligated to. And then next thing you know, we're stress eating and we're just always talking negative about ourselves. <clears throat> so often, I'm ugly. I'm fat. I'm not good enough. I'm blah, 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 blah. So, rule number one, take that crap out of your head. Once you throw a negative thought in your head, dismiss it. It's okay to have it. I've had a ton of it. I grew up with a ton of insecurities, anxiety. We, came, we grew up in a very low demographic household when we came here from Vietnam. And you can only imagine the amount of bullying that took place, right? You got either curl up in a ball and cry, or you just step up to the plate and just take things that come at you and be, how do you be that bigger person in these encounters that you have? And it's one of those things you kept pushing, kept pushing. And that's generally my personality. And no matter what hardship comes my way, I will find a solution. And so I was training. So still with this clinic, still with the gym, I'm training from seven to nine. Back to back clients, nonstop. Okay. I have my awesome wife, two incredible sons, uh, Mason and Liam. And I would go home and I would... She would tell me, it's like, you're giving us the crumbs of your days. And I was all like, holy smokes, you're right. 
right? Because I was pursuing this. Yeah. I'm, I'm a human being too. I'm not a machine. Yeah. Right. I'm literally running from seven to nine. And then I would go home and boom, when she told me that a flip switch, I need to be a better husband, father in that. There's no point in however much money you make or how much you bring to a person. If you are not present, and giving that individual that's in front of you regards, love, and attention, it's all pointless. Yeah. Right? And so when she told me that, it real big-time mental shift. I freaking, I go home, I put the bags down, I'm all in with my families. Yeah. And so uh, one of my clients came up to me, uh, Daryl. Uh, he owns uh, Hayden Construction. And yes, construction. <laughs> total 180 yeah and so it, it was funny we were working out and he sees me stressing out he can see it because i was very i was working in the business and not on the business right i was very reactive and not strategical and so he was like hey man he's got a growing company this guy, i need someone like you i need a right hand man i can trust that has Real goals, real passion, and real intent. It's like, okay. But I was like, dude, I don't know anything about construction, right? I've been doing this all my life. Yeah. Human performance. Yeah. Rehab, right? That's all I knew. And um, he, it's, it's funny, it comes full circle because he was one of my first clients ever that gave me the opportunity so many other clients. I will always, always, always be grateful to him. Uh, he's just, and I'm, extremely grateful to the people I've encountered along my journey, but he, he, he holds a special place in my heart because he believed in me a lot. Right. When I had my doubts and insecurities and it just takes that one person and he challenged me. Yeah. And he was like, if you want to, no pressure. So now he's given me the ability to work in the business or on the business and not in the business. And so now I'm doing, construction uh it's a it's industrial uh tilt wall buildings pre-engineered metal buildings and just trucking yards stabilizing yards and i'm constantly learning and absorbing new to, to me you're given two things as a human being it is education and physical activity by the man upstairs or whoever you believe in, you're given two things as a human being. It's education and physical activity. Meaning, you're put here on this earth to learn whatever it is and absorb whatever it is that you love learning about. I know you love photography and I know you have a creative mind. I feel like that's your true passion over dentistry. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when I see you, your image, how you dress, your swag, and what just how you present yourself, I feel like you're a much more right-brained person. You're much more of a creative, right? And I could be totally wrong, but that, that's what I vibe. And physical activity is because movement is medicine. We're not designed to be put here to be sedentary. And that's the issue with today's healthcare is that so many doctors and clinicians are seeing lazy sedentary people that has self-inflicted these chronic ailments to themselves because of Big Pharma and the FDA. That is two of the most corrupt, corrupt son of a guns out there. And I'll say it time and time again, I don't care. Yeah. All this processed food you're putting in your body, it's the reason why you have diabetes, hypertension, and all these kidney failures. Yeah, go ahead. During COVID, go pump as much alcohol into your system as possible. Yeah. But no one is talking about, hey, man, go get sunlight. Go exercise. Yeah. I to prevent if, this. I don't know if that kidney failure was a jab at me there, but you got No, me. no, no. I, <laughs> I'm, yeah. just, I'm, I'm not even thinking about that, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. No, you're but right. But just in general. Yeah. Even in dentistry, I mean, uh, patients are constantly telling me like, why do I have so many cavities? Like, what? Like, how come my grandma or whatever in Europe doesn't have? And it's like, yes. it's the refined sugar. Yes. Here. Like we have the most processed refined mm. sugars in our products. Like ketchup has more sugar than yes. like, uh, you know, a croissant in France, which yeah. is crazy to think because you would think that's... The the more unhealthy thing. Well, here's the thing. I love America. Yeah. I truly do. I'm very grateful to be in this country today because yeah. I came from a third world country. Yeah. But it is all about capitalism here. Yeah, for right? sure. And it's all about how much 
you can maximize the bottom line versus actually doing whatever it is that you are put on this planet to do, whether what job title you may have, what industry you may be in. We should be proactive about making the individual healthier versus slowly killing them, right? And then until med them up, take all this medication, and next thing you know, you're in a nursing home at the freaking age of 60. Yeah. Doing nothing with your life. Yeah, even when I was in the hospital um, with the kidney situation, um, their main thing was just like, hey, lay in bed and stay rested, like keep resting. And I remember at one point I just wanted to get out just to walk up and down the hallway. And it's like I when I was walking past these rooms, I could just see everybody just lying in bed. And I like forced myself to like walk up and down just to like avoid getting bed sores and all this other stuff that I hear about. And yeah, I think a uh, majority of our healthcare demands people do the exact opposite of being proactive and uh, mm-hmm. reactive to situations and uh, yeah, just doping them, you know, like this. Yes. I, I watched Dope Sick. That, yes. Have you seen that show? Oh my goodness. I mean, the book obviously is what it's based off, but that was the most, I mean, I eye-opening agree. thing I saw. Like it just, it was so sad to see that that's not only something that happened back then, but it's a recurring thing that we're still dealing with in our generation. If you want me to open up that soapbox, I will. <laughs> I mean, I could talk for hours. Hey, we will have more. Subject. Definitely have more episodes to get further into that. So I, I'm glad that we have so much to talk about. But um, yeah, no, it's it's cool that you were able to, you know, not only achieve so much in your field, but you're still achieving so much while doing something else in this construction uh, field. And guys, don't worry. He's not with Tony Soprano. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a fake construction business. It's a real thing here. I'm, I'm actually in the office and it's real. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess for any listeners here who are thinking about kind of taking that scary step and transitioning to something else, and maybe they just need that push or, you know, was, what was it that kind of, you said obviously Mossy was the kind of thing that pushed you towards it and made you take that leap. But when you look back now, do you feel like um, it was something you wish you did earlier or did it all just kind of work out in time as you wanted it to? I, everything, I think to me, we, we as humans are all dealt different cards in life. Some right. way worse and some way better. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're all dealt different cards and how you play with those deck of cards will determine your outcome right? and your happiness and your joy and your fulfillment, right? And so as I'm going, I, my, my love and passion is people and uh, whether it's enhancing them uh, from a rehab standpoint, performance standpoint, or intellectual standpoint, emotional standpoint, that is my, my goal. And my wife has helped increase my EQ over the years. Right. She's helped me become a more emotional, compassionate individual because, I mean, raising raising up in an Asian household, it's very stern, very negative, very critical. Yeah. And so I really appreciate her for that. And um, it's yeah, Cubans are the exact. They, oh, they're very emotional. They will people, let you know how they feel. Yes. Immediately. And so big time cultural difference. Right. And I'm glad. And that's why I think every individual should travel should explore and learn about different cultures to understand how we operate through our upbringings. And so that right there will take away a lot of the, I mean, racism. And I mean, I don't want to go to politics because I hate that stuff. But for me, it's, I will continue to add tools to my toolbox. Has Has things gotten easier? Absolutely not. And this is actually a problem of mine that I'm actually working on. Stop saying yes to everything. Stop saying yes to just everyone and helping everyone. I have to cut back on Set that. Set some boundaries. Yes, I have to. Because yeah. right now I'm putting I have three major projects in front of me and the livelihood of the, the my, my guys that I signed up with is determined on what I bring to the table as well. Right. Right. And so as a man, you make these promises, you better fulfill it. I'm a big believer in that. You don't walk no matter how hard it gets. There's so many um, nights where I I question, I doubt, I'm rethinking, I'm stressing because you're trying to fill all these buckets and there's only one of you. and There's only 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Right. And so. And then you have your family, like you said, on top of that. Correct. And so to me, it's like. It's never easy, 
but nothing good in life is. Yeah. Right. I'm a big believer in that. And, but if you continue to adjust, adapt and learn and listen, there's nothing you can't overcome. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident when it comes to talking about physical therapy and personal training and human performance. I'll talk to the best of them. I'm in an industry now where I'm a shrimp in this game now. Yeah. I'm a nobody. Yeah. Right. And I'm trying to learn this industry and I'm putting in hours as much as I physically can, mentally can yeah. in order to do so. And with that, I have to do it the right way. Right. Because to me, no matter what it is, do it ethically correct. You know, put your morals into it and don't don't burn anyone along the way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's why you got hired into this. It's because he saw exactly what I saw when I first met you. I think it's a rarity that we come across people like this. And that's why I started this podcast is because there's a certain energy and this feeling you get when you talk to certain people who have that drive and passion and it's infectious and it's nice to be around that kind of energy. And I think when he picked it up, he knew that this is a skill that is transferable to any position. You don't have to work in healthcare to be successful in this field. As long as you have that certain trait, which is what I saw, which is what I try to manifest in these podcasts is yes. once you have that trait, you can be literally anything. You can be the janitor in a yes. high school, but you could be the best goddamn janitor yes, in the world. Percent. right? And Agreed. as long as you love what you do and you're passionate about it and you're, you're willing to come on a podcast and talk about it. I think that is what makes it, so special to me. And that's why I like to have someone like you who's doing physical therapy, but next minute I'll talk to somebody who's doing uh, <laughs> something else. It's just nice yeah. to be able to hear your perspective on it. Cause to us, it's just a profession. It's just something that you yeah. do. Like from my perspective, you were just going in there and massaging people, no yeah. offense, but that's no, like what totally. I saw. Right. Yeah. And then the way you explained it to me and you explained my processes and what's causing this imbalance. Like I, you know, I remember you told me that my right side was higher than my left yeah. side. And like it's something I never saw. And I look at myself in the mirror every single day. And it's not till you pointed that, that I noticed it. And you immediately knew why it was happening because of my profession, because of what I was doing, my gait and everything was off. Um, so I thought that was beautiful. And the fact that I know that you're going to be successful in this construction profession, because you're going to you. put Thank the you. same energy and love into it. So yeah, it's incredible, man. But um, yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to say? It's just one of those things where I want people to know that, our minds are the biggest obstacle course we as humans have to overcome. Yeah. You yourself are the reason why you are not doing what it is that you love doing. Yeah. Stop scrolling through social media and comparing your life to someone else that's laying on a beach or traveling to wherever and just do whatever it is that you want to do and not allow this mind to inhibit you from doing so. Yeah. That's right? another thing, guys, is he does not have a social media, right? Am I do I still not. Correct? I do not have a personal social media. So, I operate uh, my business social media. Uh, I'm again, it's a great tool, right? Yeah. And a lot of people out there are crushing it. Yeah. Right. And making killer profit margins off whatever it is and continue to do so. Yeah. I do not because I don't want to get distracted if you want to uh, use that word, right? I, I know my why. Discover your why. Whoever you are out there, discover your why. And that right there will help what, pursue whatever it is that you want to do. Because if you don't, then you're always going to be lost. Because yeah. there's no purpose, right? You hear that a lot where I don't have a sense of purpose. What do you mean? Yeah. You are one sperm of a billion that made it out. Yeah. You're already winning, yeah. right? Right. Go like you have a life. Yeah. Whatever purpose you want of it is yours. Yeah. And so, so especially if you're born in America, you're already winning. Yeah. You're already richer than freaking the majority of the world. Yeah. So don't take that for granted. Yeah. I work with these kids, these high school kids, these athletes, and whether they've been through rehab wilderness programs, I sit down with them. I talk to them. I just relate to them. Right. Because you got so many people in today's age going through a lot of mental issues. And to me, a lot of that is self-inflicted. Yeah. And I say that with compassion. It's whatever you however you perceive of it. Granted, like I said, some people are dealt with different cards. Someone had a childhood that should have never been abused that way. Yeah. Right. And that pains me to know that 
someone could do that to a child. But just know that you can, there's nothing that you can't overcome. Yeah. Right. And so just to me, a, one of the greatest quotes is discover your gift, work on your gift, master it and give it away. To me, I'm a big believer in that. We, if you are born on this planet, you have a purpose. Yeah. It's whatever you choose to make of it. Right. It took me a long time to find mine. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It did, I was not until 24. I was pretty lost. Yeah. I was always comparing. Oh, my buddy's an engineer. My buddy's a doctor. My buddy's in this college. My but whatever. My buddy's a BMW. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And now I'm like comparison. Thief of joy. Correct. Right there, right? And so now when I sought out to pursue my passions, that's when I was the most happiest. Yeah. Even I have, I have so many things on my plate today. But I'm so grateful for these things I have on my plate. Yeah. All right. Have you uh, heard of the concept of Ikigai? Yes. Please educate me on that some more. Yeah, that's what I was going to pull up. Uh, so it's a Japanese concept yes. and it's exactly mm-hmm. what you're talking about. And it was, you know, I don't want to butcher it, but it's these four um, different traits. And one of them is obviously achieving happiness, uh, fulfilling like your passions and helping others yes. through all that and you basically achieve ikigai when all of those are interwoven yes. in one circle and um not only are you happier but you live a longer more fulfilling life yes. and there's a place in japan where people achieve this ikigai and they have the highest number of centaurians that mm-hmm. live there people that live past 100 right and Amazing. it's because they've achieved that and yes. it's exactly what you said you when you were speaking about that the entire time it was all the traits of ikigai that are achieved. And I learned about that through another mentor and I've been trying to achieve it. It's hard. It's not something you can just achieve in a day. Um, it's something you, at least once you know it, you can strive towards it. Yeah, and you I think have to pursue it. Yeah. And it's something that you just have to, I, it's like one of those tunnel vision things. Once you have it, you can focus yes. on it and you can kind of block out all yes. the peripheral distractions that, you know, the jealousy, the comparison syndrome. Yes. And we're all, guilty of it. I think, you know, I'm guilty of it. And no matter where you are in life, no matter how successful you are in life, you're always going to fall into those little pits of like comparing yourself to the next person who's a little bit more successful than you. And I think you just have to constantly just get back to that main focus of your ikigai and what drives you there. A lot of it is awareness. Yeah. We lack awareness as human beings. Yeah. And, and you're right, right. It's these type of that's what makes today's generation so great too, is you have so much access to knowledge. Yeah. Right. If you are miserable today, that is on you. Yeah. In my opinion. Right. To me, depression, I'm about to get, I'm about to piss off a lot of people right here, but I'm willing to say this and I'm saying this with a ton of compassion because I deal with a lot of people that aren't happy and I'm, able to talk to them in a way where they have a better understanding of it now. Right. And how to change it. Right. Yeah. To me, depression isn't a clinical disease. Right. Ooh. But it is a feeling. It's okay to feel depressed. It is okay to feel sad. But you have to find out what the root cause of that is. Peel those layers of onions back. And I can't tell you how to do it. I can't. I could give you tips. I could guide. I will sit down with you for endless hours to help you out of this. But you yourself are the only individual that can get out of it. Yeah. Right. A lot of times when we go into this state of depression, we keep dwelling and digging ourselves deeper into this hole and we're not actually climbing out. Sometimes just go shower. Yeah. Right. If you truly are depressed, go take a shower every day. Yeah. Right. And not lay in bed and wonder and why me and whatever. It's perception. Yeah. Right. And a lot of us in America have all the resources to to seek knowledge, to seek help. You don't need to please everyone get off of antidepressants. I'll say that right now. okay? because that right there is an artificial killer. You cannot take something to make you feel a certain way and think that will be everlasting. Is it wrong to take it just to get a kickstart? Sure. Why not? I don't care. All right. But truly, and again, I'm not a medical professional. 
I'm not in this. This is I'm not an expert in this world. Full disclosure. You can hate me right now if you can, but I genuinely do care about whoever is listening and will listen. Please, you are your own. Um, you determine your own happiness and joy. Your master of your own fate. Yes, right? yeah. like you can. You are the only one that can control that. Yeah. So I mean. <clears throat> respectfully i have my pushback on certain aspects oh, no, no, i think there course, are chemical right. imbalances with of course people. of course and yeah, again yeah some people struggle with it more than others yeah right? some people can bounce back in a day yeah some people take years but i yeah i do agree on your approach that a lot of it is you know it's a matter of getting up and taking some action yes. and um there's a lot of unfortunate like self-hate that people go through yes. where they're like they push themselves into further states and that is unfortunate and but that's secondary to upbringing yeah in my opinion yeah for sure and especially if you live in a like a cultural upbringing yes. uh, of immigrant parents there's a lot of uh, causative factors of abuse and everything like yes. that and uh i you know i was a victim of it <clears throat> recently and i didn't believe in anxiety i didn't believe in depression and then i went through it but it's like you said it was one of those situations where i was able to control it i was able to like get up and say all right enough of this like, yes i'm going to take the necessary right. steps so um it is something that you know it's a matter of taking that step and trying to figure out what you can do to help yourself and tan's right you know there's 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 a way to kind of get yourself out of bed and take those showers. Start taking cold showers every day. By the right. way, I'm a big it's fan like, of cold showers. Like game changer. Yeah. Yes, it is. It sucks. Yeah, but if once you do it, boy, yeah. does it feel. I amazing. thought I'd get used to it, but I still have. Yeah, no, you have days. Don't, yeah, yeah. I, I'm guilty of it yeah, too. Yeah. Right? There, there's days where like boom, cold shower. Let's go. Yeah. There's, there's days, man. I'm just so warm. <laughs> I, I don't want to move. Yeah. It's one of those things. It's normal human behavior, yeah. right? And. Tell me about that, actually. So obviously there's been research on it and stuff, but I want to kind of hear your perspective on it because I'm sure there's some listeners that don't know about cold showers. So you yes. probably are more well-versed in it than I am. Okay. Um, to me, a great mentor in any subject or category can simplify any material, right? right. That's what makes a great educator. And um, so think of it this way, all right? I'm not saying I'm going to simplify this or educate you in any phenomenal way, but I'm going to do my best. So we have been put on this planet for years since the beginning of time. Right. Everything has advanced on this planet. Technology, cars, beds, houses, whatever, you name it. We're still the same human beings of back then. Same hair, same skin, same whatever. Why are we taking so many artificial approach to enhance us, the person. A lot of the things that can make us truly happy and change our perspective is, are the natural resources provided on this great green earth. Right. I'm a, I'm a big advocate for whatever grows, consume it. Right. Right. And so cold water, I mean, they do this practice all the time up in Northern Europeans or just any Northern states. Yeah. It It's a total reset uh, of your body. When you, if you want to get better at anything in life, true, you have to struggle at it first, right? You will fail many times before you become successful. And so with the cold shower, it's the same concept. I don't want to do it. No one wakes up in the morning like, I'm going to, I can't wait for this cold shower. Yeah. But again, you have to tell yourself to go do it and then you have to apply it. Yeah. It's kind of like losing weight, right? Uh, I'm going to start next week. I'm going to start next year. You can say whatever you want to your blue in the face, but until action takes place, nothing will change. So from a cold shower perspective, helps with your immunity, helps with blood circulation, helps with, it releases positive hormones. Yeah. Because when you're in that cold shower, I'm, I'm jumping up and down in there. And then once I get that diaphragmic breathing down and I can breathe and calm myself down, and that's where I talk, whenever I talk or work with anyone, we address between the ears, your mental first. You have to commit to whatever it is that you want to pursue. Then you have to master your lungs. Right? I have a lot of guys that I want to aesthetically look like this or I want to run that. No, master the internals first, right? So master between the ears first, master your breathing technique first. If you get those two components down, you will be in phenomenal health. Yeah, people underestimate the power of breathing. Oh, my word. The importance of breathing. And 
go put yourself in a cold shower. Yeah. And <laughs> you're doing this a lot, right? Yeah. So you're just huffing and puffing. You're not getting good oxygen into your system. Yeah, I've got lightheaded many times. Yes. Just from not preparing to get in there. Correct. But so the great thing about this is that once it forces you to go into a different state of mind, yeah, it forces you to breathe, regulate your breathing, you calm your mind down. And once you turn that cold shower off, oh my goodness, this sense of euphoria goes yeah. to your body. And clarity. Yes, I feel like so much when you, clarity. When you get in that cold shower, you can be stressing about anything and everything. And the yes. moment you get in there, your mind just clears because you're trying to figure out why your body just went into yes. hypothermia. Right? So yes. And yeah. But the premise of this is, so blood flow is the number one healing agent. Yeah. Over any substance, anything in life, blood flow, because it carries oxygen and oxygen gives life to everything. Right. Right. A plant, you cover a plant, it dies. A fire, you cover that fire, it dies. A human, you choke him, he dies. Yeah. So if you can get oxygen, proper oxygen into your own body efficiently, because a lot of us, you know this very well, being in the dentistry field, a lot of people don't breathe right. No. And that's why there's so many health issues. A lot of it's just in your breathing. Yeah. And so if you can master your breathing and get sufficient oxygen through your body, you will feel a different type of way. Yeah. I mean, we deal with sleep apnea patients a lot. Sleep apnea. I mean, it's funny. I look in the mouth and I can immediately tell the patient has sleep apnea. Yes. And um, yeah, it's a breathing is one of the most underrated uh, qualities you can have as a human being. Yes. People don't think about it, but yeah. um, Cool. Well, it's good to know that I am doing the right thing. No, you're doing all the right things. And uh, I challenge everyone that's listening to do this tomorrow. Yeah. Get in the cold shower. It's not only the physical attribute. I think like you said, the mental aspect of the clarity and everything, but also it's that atomic habit thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like once you do it and you start doing it consistently, it's like, okay, well, if I'm able to do a cold shower every single day, Mm -hmm. I'm able to go to the gym every day. I'm able to do that run every day. It's like you're, you're taking steps towards a more productive lifestyle and a more challenging lifestyle. And so that's, that was my kind of approach to it and trying to challenge myself with it. So it's the simple things in life. Yeah, exactly. And then you get in the hot shower and you're like, this isn't really, there was not, it's kind of overrated. There's (laughs) not much to it. I make my boys get in the cold shower. Yeah. I was like, you ready? Cold shower time. They freaking hate it. Does Mozzie do it? Uh, She's working on it. Okay. She's working on it. Nice. That's good to know. Well, Hey man, uh, it was honestly a pleasure having you. This is only my second episode. so I'm grateful to be number two. Yeah, I'm thankful that you're able to come on it. And um, hopefully we'll have another one soon down your journey and hear about construction and everything Thank and you. how that's all going in the Soprano business. But, <laughs> um, yeah, thanks again for coming on. Uh, this is Hanging Out with Hamza. Guys, this is Tan. He doesn't have a social media like we mentioned before, but if you do live in Houston and you want to come see him, uh, do you want to go ahead and shout out your companies yes. or anywhere that Follow you us. Uh, come see us at uh, Revolve Physical Therapy. Uh, that's at Revolve underscore Physical Therapy. Uh, if you want to work on human performance, and enhance yourself because you are the only thing that you can level up each day, right? And so come to us. We have a gym in Memorial uh, in Houston, Texas. It's called Maxwell Movement Clinic. Uh, come see us there as well. Uh, at the end of the day, work on yourself and everything will come to fruition. If you keep thinking about someone else, you will continue to continue thinking about that person and nothing else will come of it, right? But uh, it's Revolve Physical Therapy. Maxwell Movement Clinic and the construction company I'm working uh, uh, with right now is Hayden Construction. Uh, Love everyone in it and around it, and I'm grateful to be in it. Cool. Well, uh, thanks again, Tan, and to the listeners. um, If you have a passion, find it, pursue it, and harbor it, and achieve your maker guy. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Take care.